Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I am going to be reviewing the back profile of a snooker player and the side profile of a snooker player and analysing in detail the snooker cue grip technique of the snooker player. The aim of this is to highlight some main points with the snooker cue grip which will help to facilitate good snooker cue grip performance. It is important to remember that every snooker player is different and every snooker player is going to deliver the snooker cue grip slightly differently. Do you ever take time out to analyse aspects of your snooker game? If you do, feel free to let us know in the comments section below and help us all improve our snooker games. And if you do enjoy the video, please remember to like the video and please do consider subscribing to the channel. So we're going to look at a rear view angle of me playing a shot in slow motion and I'm going to make some notes about my snooker cue grip technique. On this part of the shot, I'm looking at the line of aim and I'm just preparing myself to get down on that line of aim. Now before I get down to play the shot, one of the things that I usually do is hold the cue as though I've just picked up the cue off the table and this just puts me in good stead to play the shot with good grip technique. Moving on to the next part of the shot here, I'm actually getting down on the line of aim and you can see that I'm about to bring the tip to the white ball. Now as we zoom into this part here, you can observe that my cue, elbow, arm and inner part of the wrist are all in line with the cue and they're on the line of aim and this just helps you cue in a straight line. You want to try and avoid as much as possible cueing with your grip arm bent to the left or bent to the right and you want to try avoid cueing as much as possible with your wrist bent to the left or bent to the right because this is just going to make it more difficult for you to cue in a straight line and on the line of aim. Another observation worth making here is notice the space between my grip hand and arm and my right leg. I've actually put more weight on my left leg which has enabled me to bring my right hip more to the left to create space. Common mistake that you'll often see the beginner snooker player make is that they don't actually leave enough space between the grip hand and the nearest leg. This just makes it more difficult for you to be able to play the shot with good grip technique. The next phase of the cue action is the feathers, which is a very important part of the snooker cue grip technique. You can see here as the cue comes backwards, the hand naturally opens and this just helps to keep the cue on a level plane. Likewise, when the cue goes forwards on the feathers and the tip is near the white ball, the grip hand naturally closes and this also helps you to cue on a level plane. Notice how I'm not gripping the cue too tightly or too loosely. I'm just gripping the cue firmly enough so there isn't any space or daylight around the cue with my grip hand, but not so loosely that I don't have control control of the cue on the cue action. Now as I bring the cue backwards for the final backswing before the final strike, you'll see that the grip hand opens up and relaxes more and then I push the cue through to the chest with the grip hand and the grip hand naturally closes. You can apply a bit more pressure on the closure of the cue after the final strike, but I wouldn't recommend squeezing the cue. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at me playing a shot in slow motion from the side view and we're going to make a couple of observations with my snooker cue grip technique from the side. Now I've chalked the cue, I'm looking at the line of aim and preparing myself to get down on the line of aim. Now like on the previous shot, what I'm doing here is holding the cue as though I've just picked it up off the table and this just gives me confirmation that I'm holding the cue correctly and I feel that this just puts me in good standing for performing good snooker cue technique on the shot. Now the next step here is to bring the tip to the white ball and note that when I do that, that the grip hand 
an arm is on a 90 degree angle. So this means that the grip hand isn't too far forward and it isn't too far back. And that's important because when you're delivering the cue action, holding the grip hand in this position enables you to get adequate backswing and follow through on the cue action. And it makes it easier for you to be able to execute a full cue action. The next step on this cue action is to start feathering the white ball. The most important thing here is to try and keep the cue action as level as possible throughout the full range of motion on the cue action and one of the ways in which you can do this is by opening the grip hand on as you bring the cue backwards and closing the grip hand as you bring the cue forwards and that prevents a seesaw motion with the cue action. You can see a little bit of wrist flick on the final backswing before the final strike and then you end the cue action by pushing the cue through to the chest. If you feel it helps you can also stay down for a second or two at the end of the shot and just make sure that the grip hand isn't gripping the cue too tightly or too loose and that just gives you confirmation that you're holding the cue with the right amount of pressure. You can also check that the grip hand didn't twist on the final strike. Okay so now here is is the first shot in slow motion without me stopping and starting it. And here is the second shot in slow motion, without me stopping and starting it. Now here is the first shot at full speed. And here is the second shot at full speed. So there you have it, a detailed analysis of the snooker cue grip technique. And if you did enjoy the video or find this video useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, cheers.